Hello Grade 10s. In this lesson, we look at how a vibrating electric charge sends out an electromagnetic wave. We'll have to recap the lesson on electric and magnetic fields. The electric charge you see here has an electric field all around it. This means that any other charge that comes into the field will feel the push or pull of the first charge. If the first charge moves, another charge at some faraway point will feel the changes in the push or pull. When an electric charge moves, it creates a magnetic field around its path at right angles to the path. Now watch how the needles respond when we pass a current down the wire. The current goes down, but the magnetic field goes sideways around the wire. So the field is at right angles to the current. Now what happens if the current direction changes back and forth? Watch this. Do you see? The magnetic field changes direction each time the current changes direction. But each time the magnetic field changes, it creates an electric field. I'm going to move the magnet's north pole into the coil. As the coil feels the magnetic field increasing, it generates a current. When I pull the magnet out, the magnetic field passing the wires changes again, and the current in the wire moves the other way. So we have found a fundamental principle in physics. When charges move, they cause a magnetic field, and when the magnetic field changes, it causes an electric field. And the two fields are at right angles to each other. That's important, don't forget it. So how does a radio station transmit its signals? This is a model of a radio transmitter antenna. There is a battery with negative and positive terminals connected to the two wires and a switch that lets me change the positive and negative terminals quickly. At this moment, the top wire is connected to the positive terminal and the bottom wire to the negative terminal. The battery causes an electric field between the positive and negative wires. Now if I switch them over, the top wire is connected to the negative and the bottom wire to the positive, and the electric field reverses. So the field was first of all downwards, and now it is upwards. But notice that a faraway point on the right of the picture does not yet know that the field has changed. The change will take a certain amount of time to reach there. What happens in time when the electric field is swapping over from pointing up to pointing down? It weakens, becomes zero, and then increases in strength, but in the opposite direction. If we draw a graph of field strength versus time to show these changes, we get a sine graph. In this simulation, you saw what happens to the electric field. The red lines show you the electric field getting stronger, then weaker, and changing direction. But remember that each time the electric field gets stronger, it generates a magnetic field at right angles to it. In the simulation, you see the red lines of the electric field and also the blue lines of the magnetic field. Each time the electric field in red gets stronger, it generates a magnetic field at right angles to it. The blue lines show you the magnetic field getting stronger and then weaker and changing direction. And then, as the magnetic field changes, it generates an electric field. By the time the changing fields reach the faraway point, they are in phase and they are moving like this. Now let's go to that faraway point. We're going to put a radio receiver antenna there. The electrons in the antenna will move up and down at the same frequency as the wave, and the wave has the same frequency as the electrons oscillating in the transmitter antenna. So how long does it take for the electrons in the faraway antenna to know that a change has happened in the transmitter? In other words, what is the speed of the wave? The Scottish scientist James Clerk Maxwell in 1864 worked out what the changing electric and magnetic fields would do and what the speed of the wave would be. This is an amazing intellectual achievement since there were no radios or other devices to generate electromagnetic waves. 
From his mathematics, he predicted that when someone found such a wave, its speed would be the same as the speed of light, about 300 million kilometers per second. In Maxwell's time, nobody knew how to create electromagnetic waves. About 20 years after Maxwell made his prediction, Heinrich Hertz in Germany found a way to generate electromagnetic waves. Using the relationship between frequency and wavelength, he was able to calculate the speed of the waves. His result was 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, just what Maxwell had predicted. Maxwell's equations had predicted that scientists would find many electromagnetic radiations with many different frequencies. So the search began for other kinds of electromagnetic radiation. Sure enough, scientists began to find them. And that is what you can learn about in the next lesson. That's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.ca.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.